Angels Journal Life. Hello and welcome to the Rangers Journal. My name is Kai Watts and today is going to be a bit of a different video. I know every Friday I say we will look at the Rangers rumours, but given the Champions League exit, there's not really been many rumours. One of the few was Bobby Clark to Rangers on loan, but it looks like he's moving permanently to Salzburg. And another one was Mohamedou Diara, who was linked by the Daily Record, a striker currently playing in Austria. There doesn't seem to be anything behind that. There's been nothing about it since it was just reported during the week. And then again, nothing's come out about it. So instead of doing that, we're going to look at what should Rangers do with Yanis Hadji. It's been a really hot topic recently, considering the performances of Tom Lawrence. Lots of discussion about the number 10 position and whether it should be something that's abolished to go to a flat three or we just need a better player in the number 10. And is Yanis Hadji a better player than Tom Lawrence? Personally, I think, given what Tom Lawrence has offered so far, Hadji definitely could have offered more. But in today's video, we're going to look at kind of what happened so far this summer what Yanis Hadji's been up to, what's been said about him, what he done last season, and I'll look back at his best season for Rangers and the kind of form that fans are hoping that he can rekindle if he gets back in the team. So let's get started. First thing we're going to look at is what's been said about Yanis Hadji this summer. So obviously after the Euros, it kind of came out that his agent was searching for a move. He said it was the best thing for the player, but Hadji himself never really came out and said anything like that. And Philip Clement done an interview with Sky Sports, as you can see on the screen there. And his quote when asked about the future of Hadji and Cantwell, he said that it was not me making these kind of decisions. And obviously it's been reported that Hadji supposedly wasn't part of Philippe Clement's plans, but in the interview the manager suggested it's not him kind of making those decisions at the club. And I'm looking at the Daily Record column here, so this article kind of talks about the wage clause that's supposedly in Hadji's contract and potentially why he's not been played. So I'll just read what that says. It says, so, given Clement is on the outlook for quality, it was perhaps surprised when they revealed Giannis Hadji wouldn't have any part to play under him. Clement said, is it part of my plans? No, we had clear talks before the pre-season with his agents about that. We need to look, like I said, at a lot of things in the club about wages, how many you can have in a position with the budget and get the budget to get the transfers. Clement's reference to the wages made more sense when it emerged that if Hadji, just one game from becoming the Rangers Centurion as he sits on 99 games, has a certain number of appearances for the light blues and it will trigger a wage hike on the contract extension he signed at Ibrook shortly after Michael Beale was appointed in December 2022. And it says record support can now reveal that the weekly figure pay packet would rise by an amount of 6000 meaning it would cost the club around 600 k for remaining in Glasgow for the remainder of the two years the deal had to run. So obviously something that's really interesting that hasn't been mentioned and I don't know how it's managed to come out that that was in there. It also seemed a really weird decision at the time that he decided to get a contract extension from Michael Beale and he hasn't played much since that happened. Had you just come off the back of a long-term injury, hadn't really done much, if anything, and then was handed a contract extension, which when you now realise that a clause like this has been inserted, like what, what was the board doing approving this? There was no guarantee that Hadji was going to get back to the level that he was in that 55 season. He hadn't been the season after and before his injury, he hadn't been at that level. I know obviously in hindsight people look at how good he was in that 55 season and talk about the ability that he has, but before the injury he wasn't in great form. Like He hadn't been brilliant before the injury, he was then injured, came back and was given a new deal. It was a really bizarre decision at the time and now it seems even more bizarre given that that clause was input and the fact that Beal never played him anymore after that. And then he obviously loaned him out to Alaves. So I don't really know what was happening there again. Just looking at boardroom level, it just seems a bit of a farce that that deal was approved. You would imagine it's something that had his agents pushed for. And now the fact that he's not going to get that means the club are looking to sell. It's just, again, an absolute mess at, at all levels. I feel, I feel for Yanis Hadji. It's obviously a really good deal that he signed and when your agent puts that on the table for you, you're not going to turn it down. You would also assume that when the new manager's coming in and giving you a new contract that you're in their plans, that didn't happen and you got loaned out the next summer. I do feel really sorry for him. He went out to Alaves and didn't kind of have a great time either. But he had a decent appearance at the Euros and a couple of sub appearances as well. So his stock kind of was high at the start of the summer. His obviously name brings a bit of reputation as well and that adds a bit on to the fee whether you like it or not. The name brings that kind of celebrity status along with his ability as well. Could potentially drive that that value up but it was just a really interesting thing to read that that's a clause that was inserted in the contract it just makes you think why 
why was he given it? Why was that contract extension even signed when that was going to be the case? And now it looks like the club are potentially struggling to sell. And there was apparently going to be a bid income from Fiorentina. That's went very quiet and nothing's came of that. So Hadji's now playing his trade in the B team, which I think is a bit of a waste for everybody. I get looking at those figures, why the club are maybe not wanting them to get that 100th appearance and paying the extra 600k over two years. But again, personally, I just feel sorry for the player. It's not his fault he's ended up in this situation. I don't think it's Clement's fault either. I just really question why, at the time when Michael Beale came in at the board and the manager himself decided to dish out this contract. And we've obviously heard a lot from Clement previously talking about Beale on the board, Hadji's agent himself, but what have we heard from Hadji himself? Well, the answer is pretty much nothing really. He was obviously away at the Euros after being at Alaves last season and then got married in what seemed like an incredible event that was live on Romanian TV, like I said about his celebrity status. That's how big this guy is in Romania. That's how much weight the name carries that his wedding was televised on Romanian TV. So that was obviously delayed him coming back to to Ibrooks and back to pre-season. But since then, he's been playing with the B team. And last week, he obviously scored a hat-trick against, against Derby. A really good hat-trick, actually, including one direct free kick. Just shows the quality, and they played the game before that as well, and I think he got an assist. He's obviously too good to be playing to be playing at that level. But the only thing we've actually heard from Yanis Hadji, and you can see on the screen, was an Instagram story that he'd clipped, and it just says... Home is good when the original post was talking about his 60 minute hat trick against Derby for the B team. All he said is, Home is good with the blue love heart. That is pretty much all we've heard from Giannis Hadji regarding the whole situation so far. And it's it's tough, like I say, it must be tough for him. It's not his fault he was handed the new deal, it's not his fault that that clause was in there. Again, you presume when he signed the contract that he thought he was going to be part of Michael Beale's plans only to be shipped out to Alaves for the whole of last season. And then he's come in and Clement has obviously said that it's not his decision to go through this, to go through the sale. Potentially it doesn't rate him anyway. It's something that's quite unclear if Clement would want to keep him if that clause wasn't a thing. It's probably a difficult question to ask and not one that's kind of at the forefront, and especially when we need money in that we maybe should be trying to sell players that have any kind of value. But again, it just must be really tough for, for Yanis Hadji to love the club you're at to go through that injury to come back and sign a new deal to think that everything's getting back on track to be then shipped out and loan and come back and told that you don't have a future because you're about to trigger a clause that you probably thought was a good thing for yourself and a good deal for you and your agent at the time. So let's look at what he done last season on screen. You can see his numbers for Deportivo Alaves and his loan spell. So obviously looking at the key stats, 22 appearances, he only had 8 starts, 0 goals, 2 assists, just under 400 minutes per goal contribution, 74.2% pass accuracy, 2.71 chances created per 90, 63.6% dribble success per 90, 2.14 fouls, 1 per 90, and 55.8% duels, 1 per 90. He kind of mixed with a combination of playing in the middle behind the striker or out as a right winger in what was most of the time a 4-2-3-1 for Alaves, who actually had quite a successful season last season, finished mid-table in La Liga. But he never managed to kind of cement himself in that team. I'd assume that he would want, have wanted a lot more from that loan move and help raise his stock. And He's obviously playing at a very high level against quality players week in, week out, a lot higher than playing in Scotland. But it's not a move that really worked out for either party. He didn't get... The game time he wanted, it didn't help raise his stock, so Rangers could potentially sell him. It did help him keep his place in the Romania squad for the Euros, which is obviously good for Hadji himself. That would have been a big thing for him, trying to get in the Euro squad and be part of that team. They were obviously really impressive in the group stages and unfortunately getting knocked out by the Netherlands. But it was just a loan spell that everybody kind of hoped for a bit more from. The player himself, obviously, in terms of game time and getting experience at that level and presumably Rangers in the hopes that he could raise his stock a bit and force up his transfer value and get a bigger fee for him in the summer. That didn't happen. He's now back at Rangers. He's now playing with the B team. So I think we can see it's a pretty unsuccessful loan spell all round. Now on screen you can see Yanis Hadji's numbers from the 55 season when he was 22. Let's look at the key stats here. 33 appearances, 23 from the start. 
7 goals and 11 assists, 109 minutes per goal contribution, 81.7% pass accuracy, 1.55 chances created per 90, 46.3% dribble success per 90, 2.06 fouls 1 per 90, and 44.8% duels 1 per 90. He was so impressive that year. It's the fact that he can take the ball on both feet that makes it so difficult to read where he's playing in the middle, and obviously on the right and the left. Like I say, he's so comfortable taking the ball with both feet, taking the ball under pressure, Brilliant vision, can unlock defences with just a single pass. It's the type of player that Rangers don't have right now. It doesn't even need to recreate this form. It doesn't have to be as good as he was then to offer more than Tom Lawrence is currently. Because Tom Lawrence essentially is offering nothing. There's no energy there, which, again, you probably don't get with Haji. He's not the most energetic. He's not the quickest. He's not going to kind of be full-blown in that press the way the rest of the team has been. So you're going to have to accommodate for that, which the team have been doing with Lawrence, but the difference is Lawrence isn't offering the quality going forward. Like, Lawrence has essentially been a luxury player right now. As much as we can't afford a luxury player, if you're going to have one in there, they have to be creating, they have to be scoring goals, making chances, getting shots away. Lawrence isn't doing that. He's offering absolutely nothing, so could Hadji do more than nothing? I definitely think so. Again, like I've said, I get from the club's perspective, why they don't want to trigger that clause and why they're not wanting to pay an extra 600k over the next two years. But when you think about it, what if Hadji comes in there and he's a revelation, he gets back to that form, what if he can give you seven goals and 11 assists? Those are the type of numbers from attacking midfielders and midfielders that Rangers haven't had since that season. And the type of numbers you need to win your titles, it's the type of numbers they get from Matt O'Reilly and Hadji's the type of player that can bring that. Whether you like it or not, he's definitely going to offer more than Tom Lawrence and Todd Cantwell's not going to be there. So currently, Yanis Hadji is probably the best option at number 10. It's far from an ideal situation currently. I think it all boils down to what the manager actually wants to do. If he wants to play with a number 10, I think someone else has to come in. If you're not going to use Yanis Hadji, you need to get him out of the door and get a replacement because Tom Lawrence is not the answer. Or you could drop to a flat three. Again, you're probably hoping Raskin comes in. I quite like the sound of a midfield three of Raskin, Diamandi and Connor Barron. Again, like I say, it just depends on what the manager wants. If he wants to play with a number 10, Hadji's a better option than what we currently have. But I think the issue is you play him now and then he doesn't hit that form and he's not playing well, you're stuck with him for those two years because who's going to give him that potential 30 grand that we're kind of increasing his wage to? So that's the difficulty of this one. If you can't sell him, you need to play him though. If it gets to the end of the transfer window, we can't keep pursuing with Tom Lawrence. You need to bring Hadji in at that point. But I'm more interested to know what do you think? What do you think we should do with Yanis Hadji? I think he's been unfairly treated because of what in my eyes is a ridiculous contract extension that he was offered. Presumably offered under false pretense of actually getting game time and playing for the club. But then shipped out and loan. I really respect Yanis Hadji. Actually, I think he's been thoroughly professional throughout. He's even playing for the B team and given 100% when essentially he's not been treated very well by the club, has he? He came back from injury and was given a new contract, which you're absolutely buzzing about, just to be shipped off out and loan and then told you're not playing for the club again because we don't want to give you that clause that the board personally inserted into the contract. Like It, just, it doesn't make any sense. I do feel sorry for him. I hope there's a solution out there that works best for everyone, whether it's getting him a move to get him first team football so Rangers can then replace him or giving him a chance and hopefully finds form that he has at the club previously. But like I say, I'm so interested to see what you think we should do with Yanis Hadji. How do you feel about the situation? How do you feel about how he's been treated? And like the title says, what should Rangers do with Yanis Hadji? Leave some comments down below and let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day.